gasket and then the diaphragm then the next plate okay so this is the next diaphragm with the gaskets on there we never took off again uh, we're going to soak this like we did the other to get off any debris and giving it a dampen will like I say help start the machine when you come to start it it'll um, a damp diaphragm will help, help sort of suck the other fuel through if you like so let's give this a nice dampen a nice clean might, might have been better if I'd got a bit bigger container for this but it's there it's doing its job okay now this goes back on here you'll soon see on this one you've got the impression that that we have to marry up and also you'll know which way round to get it because you've got this shape and this shape here which matches the shapes here so you, that goes on there and over the dowels okay nice clean and uh, damp we've got this one here this is nice and clean this is the top plate so again the impression with the impression okay so that's that on this stage these go back in and we'll tighten those up tighten these quite tightly <laughs> yeah when you come to tighten these tighten them in opposites so take them down to sort of finger tight and then tighten that side then it's opposite that side let me go from there to opposites tighten tighten then we'll go from these to opposites tighten and tighten the reason being is you want this whole plate to tighten down as evenly as possible you don't want one side to be more tight than the other whilst you're tightening the other side if you get what I mean because it you know it could damage things and you want what you want is a perfect seal between these diaphragms gaskets and these plates so the last thing you want is for one side to be really tight and the other side for some, for whatever reason you know damaged because it hasn't been tightened up evenly okay now it's time for this uh, little gauze strainer it's metal gauze type strainer thing here we are dip that in the fuel again you'd be surprised what's just come off that sometimes you can't see dirt on these but there is um, it's it's largely because because they're a see-through item you can get it can sort of leave de the fuel can leave deposits over time on these and you can't really see the deposit it's more like a sort of thick gunk um, and it, although it looks clean you can see through it as you can see through there it, it won't actually let petrol through but I know this does because I've put what you, what you want to do is just pour a little bit of petrol on you can see it dripping through slightly and I could tell that just by doing that it was dripping through okay and that there was no uh, that's not occurring on this fuel can go through it okay so we're all right they'll, they'll be bend sort of bend one way if you have a look at that that's sort of bending upwards they do have a natural bend on them and I always put the bend upwards so when that's in there like that the natural curve the natural bend is coming up okay we've got the cork gasket you can see by looking at a gasket which way it would have come off I think it came off that way because the impression it's left in the gasket um, matches that of the impression on the back of this so to me it was that way up so that goes in there we'll give this a nice clean now okay so that's all cleaned up nicely let's move the fuel out of the way now remember what we said we said that this goes back on in line with this dowel thing which is basically the butterfly rod the other side of it the other side of the butterfly rod it matches up with that there and then uh, give that a tighten but we haven't got to over tighten this uh, but it has got to be it has got to feel sort of tight so 
you've just got to go common sense on this that's it about there <coughs> now at this stage we're almost there said high was right and low was left so we'll put low in first give that a dip and this is anything on the end we'll blow off the end and we'll put that in the L which is the low making sure that the spring the washer and the o-ring is on there so otherwise if the spring the washer and the o-ring aren't on there it won't seal in there and you won't be able to get the mixture right when you come to start the machine it'll play havoc you won't be able to set this mixture to get the machine running just right so in the fuel again like the other one blow off make sure they're all in there pop it back in and at this stage we tighten them right down finger tight go in till they stop uh, don't over tighten these when they stop it, it it means that they are at the end it's not like as if um, the threads will get tight or they shouldn't do there so just gently tighten them when you when you come to a uh, a stop that's it you stop with it okay now <clears throat> manufacturers recommendations say that these should come back out one turn each I've always found that you can start them so much better and set them up so much easier if the high if the high comes out one turn so that's off one and the low comes out one and a half turns half one one and a half I've always found that better that's me um, we've got just this last one to put in now so we'll give that a dip and because it's got holes in there we'll uh, clean it with the wire brush and um, we'll give it some airline as well I've got a wire brush that I use just for this kind of thing a bristle and I'll put the wire brush bristle inside that little hole and there are, just to make sure everything's clean in there and it's out the other side now and down in that hole so there's a little ball in there um, which makes a seat inside just got to make sure you don't damage that but that looks fine another little dip and uh, have a little blow off and that goes back in back into that bit Give it a nudge. Give that a good tighten, tighten as, as you can get it. That's it. But bear in mind, it's made out of like a brass, brassy type uh, metal. So if you're tightening it, try not to damage the the top there. Right. So that's all built up. That's the. Uh, TS350, 360 and the uh, 08S chainsaws um, and there we have it like I mentioned earlier um, you can ultrasonic clean these and you can use the carb spray um, both of those ways are brilliant and they work brilliantly and those who do it that way are doing it right of course uh, but 20 years ago when I first started doing these well over 20 years now um, the, none of that was popular. We, in fact, we didn't really, we never really heard about sonic cleaners or carburetor spray, and we were stripping them down and cleaning them the way I've just explained, and they were running perfectly. So, um, if it is that you haven't got these fancy, fancy, fantastic things, uh, just do it the way I've showed you. It's absolutely fine, and that goes with most carburetors, to be honest. To be fair, it's only in the last two years or so, when everyone's gone mad on sonic cleaners and. Um, this carb spray um, I do use them both of them so I'm not against them I'm um, for them but what I'm saying is is if you haven't got all these things then worry not you can still service and clean your carburetor absolutely perfectly and it'll work absolutely perfectly the way I've just showed if you do find you're still having problems then uh, yes you could go and seek out somebody who's got a sonic cleaner ask them if they can sonic clean it and uh, try some um, carburetor spray but you'll tend to find that if you've cleaned it right and you've used an airline some wire brush bristles you, you should be okay but as I say there's always the option of um, uh, the others if, if not